Good day, dudes. Um, just about finished all the jobs here, and pretty soon we're going to be heading down the coast uh, towards Tassie. On the way, we're going to film all of the bars as we head down, uh, and we're going to put that on this new website. I thought I'd just better put together a bit of a um, how to on bar crossing before I start posting too many videos. I want it to be as safe as possible for you dudes out there. So I've just put together a little uh, video on how I do it. Anyway, here's some information on uh, trying to get the conditions right and what to do, how to cross them, and a bit of other information. Hope you enjoy it. Take a look and uh, hope to see you out there soon. Please don't forget, bars are dangerous places in the wrong conditions. I don't want to try and scare anyone off and it's all doable, but you must have everything right to do it safely. The first thing you need to do is get a forecast. If you're coming out across a bar, get the forecast just before you put your boat in the water or before you leave the harbour. Um, then you'll have a pretty good idea what the bar is going to be like. Use bar cams. There's uh, live cameras on most of the bars up and down the coast these days and they're another valuable tool that you can use so you can get a live look at what the bar is doing. When you're looking at forecasts, a few things you need to look at. You need to look at the wind, direction and speed. Uh, you need to look at the swell height and the swell direction. Uh, and you look, need to look at the tidal information. Tidal information is very important. Of course, the other thing to take into account is the depth on the bar. This can be gained from the chart but it's best to check with VMR for the latest soundings. Don't forget to take into account the swell height. A two metre swell would most likely decrease your depth by at least one metre. Bars uh, that look really, really terrible to cross when the tide's flowing out can look totally different when the tide's flowing in. And the best time, and I can't say this more strongly, the best time to cross any bar is in the last two hours of the uh, run-in tide. So if the tide's flooding in the last two hours of the flood before it reaches high tide, that is definitely the best time to cross uh, most of these coastal bars. Why is that? When the tide is running out, it tends to undercut the swells that are coming in across the bar. So it stands them up, the outgoing water stands the uh, incoming swells up and they'll be a lot steeper and probably broken with an outgoing tide but if you can use that incoming tide and make sure that the tide is flowing in across the bar it usually smooths things out quite considerably. You may be traveling up the coast from one bar to another and this makes it harder because you need to get the, the uh, conditions right in two places at once which is sometimes a bit of a chore but if you're um, inside a barred entrance if you're on a river somewhere and looking at cruising further up the coast try and get the bar right for your entrance because if you can't get out you're going to be able to see if the bar that you're going out across is too bad to cross and uh, you'll probably stay where you are but if you can get out across that bar it's pretty easy to see from the inside of a barred entrance what the waves are like it's a bit more difficult from outside of the bar so try and get the conditions right for the bar you're travelling to. Sometimes you can luck it out and get it right both ends, but it just depends. The main thing is, whether you're inside a river or outside of a river, don't cross a bar if the conditions don't look good. If it looks gnarly and you're a bit worried about it, stay out or stay in. Uh, you won't lose your boat if you stay at sea in most circumstances and you definitely won't lose your boat if you stay inside a river bar. So if the conditions don't look good, don't cross. Another thing to be careful of is overrun. Well, we're just crossing the bar at uh, Yamba and it's a good example of overrun because the tide was low here uh, about an hour and a half, two hours ago and we're still pushing about four knots of current. So. You can see we're only making about 2.9 uh, knots at the moment. There's still a lot of water running out across the bar uh, and this is something you've got to be pretty careful of uh, 
when you're crossing bars. The conditions aren't too bad today, but if there's a bit of wind up, it could make it uh, quite nasty out there. A good trick as far as I'm concerned, if I'm going to cross a bar, what I do before I cross, if I'm on the inside of the bar, I'll have a look at the seawall and see which way the water's flowing. If you can see the water flowing out with you, it's probably not a good time to cross. You should be pissed pushing a bit of tide when you head out across that bar. So have a look at the seawall, see what the water's doing. Just be aware of what's going on around you. Now in the videos I'm going to highlight a few of the things that will assist you to get in across these bars. And one of those things is uh, lead lights. There's two types of leads that you'll find on barred entrances. One is uh, leads in line. And the other is a high intensity lead light. There's also usually a line marked on your chart if you use a chart plotter and paper charts as well sometimes put a line that gives you the bearing on the leads. Be aware that sometimes these bars move around a fair bit. Many of them don't, many of them are quite stable but there are a few bars around that do move around, they silt up, they can be shallower than what's, um, what is shown on the chart. Take all of these things into account. It's always a good idea to call VMR before you cross a bar and you can call them beforehand and even ask them for uh, depths and things like that. VMR will not, never tell you whether you should cross or you shouldn't cross so that decision is going to be left up to you. There's too much liability involved for them to say yes it's safe to cross because they are, can be dangerous places. But they will give you information uh, such as the best way to uh, approach the bar and the bearings for the leads on the way in. Now, I went and filmed the Harrington Bar uh, on the way down the coast. Uh, it was very interesting and I talked to the VMR there and apparently they offer a service. If you want to go into Crowdy Harrington or into Harrington, uh, you can call up the VMR if you give them a call uh, a day before They'll organise to take a little boat out and show you the deepest water, let, lead you in across the bar showing you the deepest water. So that's a pretty good service from uh, VMRs. Make sure that you do use the VMRs. It's always a good idea to log on before you cross the bar. So log on before you cross, log off once you're out or once you're in. When you're going to cross a bar, prepare your boat. Make sure your boat is ready to cross. Make sure everything is stowed. You want to have everything uh, tied down or stowed. Expect to cop a wave. If you're crossing out through an ocean bar, if you're going out to sea, expect to cop a wave over the front. We don't want you going out in those conditions, but you never know. They're, they're, sometimes the waves can come from nowhere and just stand up in front of you and you'll take uh, white water over the front of your boat. So if you've got a dinghy on the front, make sure it's well lashed down. If you've got a dinghy on the back, make sure it's well lashed down. Don't th have anything in the boat that is um, going to fall or create a problem. There's nothing worse than trying to navigate out or in across a bar and you've got um, articles flying around in the cabin and rolling around on the floor. It's really distracting. Make sure that it's closed up. If you're on a sailboat, put your storm boards in. Make sure your passengers are up in the cockpit. Don't have anyone down below while you're crossing a bar. And of course, make sure you're wearing a life jacket. Uh, it's a legal requirement in New South Wales to wear a life jacket when you're crossing an ocean bar. So make sure you put one on. And make sure you've got plenty of fuel on board. Don't run out of fuel. And don't forget, it can be a little bit rough when crossing a bar. So if you've got low fuel tanks, you might end up uh, sucking air into your fuel system and shutting your motors down. So make sure you've got plenty of fuel to cover your crossing. So you've got your boat ready, you've got your crew ready, you've got your life jackets on. For your cross, whether going in or out, stop and have a good look. Look for broken water. Look for the calm sections. 
You don't want to be in the white water. Look at when the waves are breaking. Sometimes you can count sets and you'll get a calmer period between uh, sets of waves and this is a good time to cross and take all of these things into account before you get onto that heading. If you have crew on the boat and you're crossing from the sea in, uh, it's a good idea to maybe get one of your crew to spot waves from behind you. You're going to be pretty focused on staying on the leads and finding where the unbroken water is. If you get one of your crew to just keep a bit of a lookout behind, they can let you know if a bigger wave is coming and you can probably be a bit more on your toes. What you're looking for is that area of unbroken water and that will be the deepest part of the bar and the best place to cross. If the leads are taking you into broken water, don't follow them. But before you cross the bar, check your motors at wide open throttle. Push your motors right out to wide open throttle. Make sure they're going to function okay. Just check your steering too. I always stick my head in my engine rooms before I cross a bar when I'm out at sea and just have a look, make sure there's no fluid laying in the bilge and make sure everything's okay and give the motors a little bit of a push up to wide open throttle just to make sure that there's not, not going to be any problem there. It's uh, pretty important to know how your boat handles on the front of a wave too and um, a lot of boats will broach too. It's what happens in that situation the wave will pick the boat up and start surfing it down the front of the wave. Uh, when this happens, the water flow over your rudder will be in reverse. So your rudder virtually becomes useless and then the boat will probably bury the bow a little bit and start turning side onto the waves. It's not a good feeling, I can tell you from experience. Um, but know if your boat is a bit prone to broaching and then you want conditions a bit better on a bar uh, before you cross it. Catamarans usually are a bit more stable on the front of a wave. They usually surf quite straight. So if you're on a cat, you've got that ability to maybe surf a wave in. Uh, and I'm not saying you do it, but at least you know that if you do get picked up by a bit of a break, uh, you should be able to still steer the boat. If you are in... Uh, less than great um, conditions and have to cross a bar. There are things you can do such as dragging a drogue. There are drogues that are made that you can put over the back of the boat that will stop you from being pushed down the front of the wave. I think they're called a sea break. Uh, you can even drag warps out behind your boat to stop the hull speed getting up and you surfing down the front of the waves. But this is getting um, into some pretty uh, heavy seamanship skills and you've got to have the gear on the boat to do it so uh, I think you'd want to have crossed quite a few bars before you attempt to do something like that. If bars are uh, marginal as far as weather goes and break I won't cross them I'd rather stay at sea and um, do a few more hours out. Staying out is a lot safer than crossing a bar in marginal conditions. So I hope you've uh, found this video interesting. Use it as a tool. It's not the be-all and end-all. And look, all I can say to people is be concerned about bars, but don't be scared of them. If you do it when the conditions are right, you probably won't even know you've crossed the bar. So get the conditions right and uh, explore some of the places that you find. I'd much rather cross a bar if the conditions are okay than roll around in an anchorage that is uh, hard to sleep in. So if you can cross a bar and get into a river, you'll end up having a good night's sleep. If you've uh, enjoyed this video, please subscribe. It just helps me get it out to people. So subscribe, hit the bell, that'll inform you when uh, new videos come up. And stay out there till you can't. Cheers dudes.